All right, I have a question comment here that I want to go over and I uh, appreciate that, Russell. All right, so this one right here. Could you explain two things, por favor? And the first one, Revelation 6, verse 9. Uh, let, me, let me go there. Now this is in relation to the seven seals. And when he had opened a fifth seal, I saw under the souls of them that were slain for the word of God and for the testimony which they held. Here in this passage, they're not resurrected yet, nor they have their glorified bodies yet, but their souls are already in heaven, right? No, that's wrong. So they or us ascended to heaven. No. First of all, the scripture cannot contradict itself. It can't. There cannot, no, no matter how hard you try, you're not going to find a contra contradiction. And there's no possible way for the true word of God to be, to have a contradiction. If it did, the whole book's bad. And God's bad and we're all doomed. If there's one contradiction you can't believe, you can't trust that Bible. And if you can't trust that Bible, you can't trust God. So there cannot be any contradiction whatsoever. So let me show a couple verses here. Jesus himself says the scripture cannot be broken. It can't be. If you have a Bible that has broken scripture, scripture that contradicts you got a bad Bible right and um, of course in John 3 Jesus says no man has ascended up to heaven All right. this cannot be in error can't be. There's no way at all that this can be wrong. This is um, the only person that's ascended to heaven is Jesus and he has made the promise to return for us. Okay and so when he comes back in the clouds of heaven we are lifted up to meet the Lord in the air and then our enemy is destroyed forever and then we are set back down on earth all right so technically this idea of going to heaven is just but for a short time right because um, once we are lifted up we are resurrected we are changed in the twinkling of an eye we are changed from corruptible to incorruptible we are put on our glorified bodies we are lifted up in the air to meet the Lord and our enemy is at our feet and destroyed forever and then we are set back down on earth it's real simple and so this idea of you know when you die you go to heaven or hell no that technically is not does not happen until the Lord Jesus comes uh, where you go to heaven and you get eternal life or you go to hell and you're destroyed forever that only happens when at the end of the world when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven and that is the judgment of God are you saved or are you not saved that's the judgment of God there is no other judgment it's not a matter of on judgment day God is sitting there with a the calculator figuring up how many sins you've committed that's not it at all it's a matter of are you saved or are you unsaved and um, and then of course um, if you die today uh, you're not you know going to hell and playing cards with the devil or going up to heaven and playing cards with God that's not that's not happening either alright so let's go 
read the second one here Luke 16 verses 22 through 24 26 whatever Luke 16 and starting at verse 22 and it came to pass that the beggar died and was carried by the angels into Abraham's bosom. The rich man also died and was buried. And in hell lift up his eyes, being in torments, and seeing Abraham afar off, and Lazarus in his bosom. And he cried and said, Father, Abraham, have mercy on me, and send Lazarus, that he may dip the tip of his finger in water, and cool my tongue, for I am tormented in this flame. But of course Abraham said, Son, remember that thou in thy lifetime receiveth thy good things, and likewise Lazarus evil things, but now he is comforted, and thou art tormented. And beside all this, between us and you, there is a great gulf fixed, so that they which would pass from hence to you cannot, neither can they pass to us that would come from thence. So what this means is once you're saved you're saved forever and then if you die and you're not saved you've got no chance that's it it's over your story has been written and it's over the last page is written and you're not saved right that movie is over there's no other chance there's no other opportunity to be saved once you die that's why if you're dead if you if you're not saved today and you die man why did you wait there's it's too late you should have believed today before you died so obviously it's so important to teach people that today is the day of salvation you cannot put it off I mean once Jesus comes that's it whether you're dead or alive you might still be alive but if Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven and you're not saved that's it it's the end of the world there are no more second chances now second chances sounds great and people like to eat it up oh you mean I can reject Jesus Christ and still be saved I can wait. I can wait till he comes in the clouds of heaven. I can die and somebody can pray me back into heaven. Sounds great. But it's not true. It's wickedness. Pure wickedness. But there are people that teach that. And I don't want to get into that. But um, <clears throat> I don't think this is a parable because it is the only story that Jesus tells and names characters such as Lazarus and a Abraham looks like a real event and here we have Lazarus in a good place maybe in heaven with Abraham and the rich man in a place of torment in hell I guess okay so uh, the bosom of I wouldn't call the bosom of Abraham heaven alright so in order to call the bosom of Abraham heaven you essentially have to say Jesus lied and he said no man has ascended to heaven um, you'd have to say that he lied and then uh, then your whole Bible's no good I mean how do you even know Jesus is the Christ if he lied about that what else did he lie about you know so I mean that's a big problem right so the way I understand this is um, this is just giving us a clear example, a clear indication that there is a, a huge difference between being saved and being unsaved. Right? And so when a person dies, the next thing they know is the judgment of God. And. Um, this is just giving us an example. I, I would not. Um, I just don't. I just don't believe this is literal. I don't. I think this is an, a story, an example given. Uh, a little bit like uh, when the serpent 
tells Eve. Okay, let me go to that verse real quick. So, and people make a big deal out of a talking snake. You mean the snake was talking? Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord God has made. And he said unto the woman, Yea, has God said, You shall not eat of every tree of the garden? So is the serpent talking? Well, possibly, you know, maybe. But the way I understand it, the way I see this is that Eve was able to see the serpent and because she saw the serpent as he was it, the serpent was telling her these things and sort of like a dog will bark and bark and bark and the dog is telling you there's somebody outside He's not actually talking to you, but he's telling you. He's saying to you, hey, there's somebody outside. You know, or, or like the movie uh, The Jerk, where the dog comes up to Steve Martin's hotel room, and he's barking, bark, 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 fire, fire. You know, he's barking fire. And Steve Martin, he thinks he's got a hero dog, right, saving everybody. So he wakes everybody up at 3 o'clock in the morning. Well, anyways, the point is, that's how I look at it. Now, you want to disagree, that's fine. But that's how I look at it. That's how I see it, that she saw the snake. Now, I'll get real crazy with you, okay? I'll get real crazy. And I've said this for a long time. I don't believe the snake ever dies a natural death. And I think that's what Eve saw here. She saw that serpent, and she recognized that, hey, this snake never dies. And so she got beguiled by the serpent. I could be wrong. I could be wrong. But now I believe a snake can be eaten by its enemy. I believe a snake can die of hunger a, a snake can die of you know uh, you know the environment around it and those sorts of things but uh, just to die naturally I don't think a snake does that now I know I'm getting real crazy about that but um, you know snakes are very different very peculiar creatures and they will hide in one spot for months at a time waiting for its a prey to come along now if that prey never comes then they could very well die well so anyways I, I'm getting off topic here I, if I could somehow roll it back in here um, you know again this to me this uh, Abraham's bosom is simply just um, a way to see that there is um, a big difference between being saved and n being not saved. All right, that's all. That's all I'm seeing out of this. And in no way does it contradict, uh, contradict John 3, 13, when Jesus says, No man has ascended to heaven. All right, so I was thinking about going over the seven seals. I feel like I've gone on too long. But, um, yeah, and I like talking about this stuff, but the five, the first five seals already been open the first seal is the Lord Jesus Christ All right. and I saw behold a white horse and he that sat upon him had a bow and a crown was given unto him and he went forth conquering into conquer that's 
all the information we have about the the white horse or the first seal and um, <laughs> he's the first and the last all right so and then of course the sixth seal is when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven all right so I, I'd like to get into that if you have some more questions on that I'll, I'll talk I go into this more into detail but there should be no mistaking about it the five seals the first five seals have been opened shouldn't be any question about that shouldn't be any question about the sixth seal and I remember way back before I was a believer uh, this CNN was talking about David Koresh and Waco Texas and all this and that and David Koresh was gonna unveil or reveal the seventh seal well I don't know if that's even true yeah I really don't know because how do you do you believe anybody on TV I I can't there's nothing my, mysterious about the seventh seal unless you just want to go and make some stuff up but with the Bible there's nothing really mysterious about it so anyways I guess that's enough I appreciate those those questions and comment and you're at you're essentially asking uh, did Jesus lie and no Jesus did not lie nobody has ascended to heaven nobody only Jesus he's the only one and he's promised to return for us that believe in him all right and that's gonna happen guarantee it thank you